understand, I teach at a seminary. So um, it is a wonderfully open and free space to be able to be clear about what I think I'm doing. So uh, one of the things I do in all of my classes, the very first thing I do is I light a candle at the beginning of the class and I say I'm lighting this candle to remind myself that I'm not the primary teacher in the room, that we gather in the presence of the Holy Spirit. So what I'm doing is creating a space uh, I love Parker Palmer's earliest definition of teaching. To teach is to create a space in which obedience to truth can be practiced. So I'm trying to create a space in which that's possible. Because it's a seminary, I can speak openly of God's action in the world. Um, I can uh, engage students in the stories of their own lives as well as the story of the community of faith. Uh, I can talk about the ways in which this work um, unfolds in community and unfolds for justice in the world. That's, you know, that's the joy of being in the context of it. My philosophy of teaching is that, it, that what I'm doing there is uh, supporting and nurturing learning. And that, that learning, that I'm involved in that learning as much as the students are involved in that learning. You know, there's a, a phrase that gets used a lot in Christian contexts, the notion of the Great Commission. What, what are we commanded to do? We are commanded to go and make disciples. I like to think about that as go and make learners. And if you are a learner, by definition, you are risking your own understanding, right? Because to learn, to learn something new in particular is to risk your previous understanding. So what I'm trying to do is create spaces uh, in which people encounter ideas and each other and uh, contexts that can be transformative. Learning is risk-taking, learning is stretching, learning is challenging, learning is uh, full-throated, whole-bodied, whole wholehearted, uh, it's about ideas, feelings, and actions. Uh, it's about uh, particular, specific content, and it's about what you're doing with the content. It's about uh, the ways we make meaning in the world. It's about who we are as we make that meaning. It's about the context in which that meaning is being made. You know, all of those things. In other words, it's not a simple process. It's a complex and mysterious and sometimes quite awe-inspiring, sometimes frightening, um, always energizing. How do you know when teaching goes well? I don't think you do always. At least I certainly don't think I do always. In fact, one of the more powerful and mysterious things I think about teaching is that you are often in the presence of seeds that are being planted and you're not there when they bloom. So um, there are lots of tools I use to try to figure out what I'm doing and to try to be attentive to it. So for instance, I love Stephen Brookfield's Critical Incident Questionnaire, which is an anonymous tool you can use at the end of a class session uh, that begins a process where you then return to students what they've written. Uh, and that gives me a sense of, okay, what was going on in the classroom. Um, I also do a lot of teaching online and in other kinds of formats. And so um, finding multiple ways to, to get a sense of what's happening is important. Um, you know, obviously there's all sorts of ways of doing assessment. Did what you set out to learn, did the students learn what you, I mean, sure, so there, there's all of that. But, uh, but I ultimately think that learning is not a very controllable process. And so, uh, it's mysterious. I mean, that's, for me, it's a spiritual practice. And uh, that's again why I, yeah, I'm just I'm I'm conscious that I'm not the one that's making it happen. I can hopefully create an environment that is hospitable for learning. I can uh, provide frameworks for thinking about things that help students notice stuff they wouldn't have otherwise noticed. I can put in front of them uh, content and stories and theoretical analyses that invite them beyond some of their kind of current understandings. But to a certain extent, I can't make them learn it. I like the metaphor of midwifery. I like to think of myself as someone who has walked alongside a lot of people in learning. Um, I'm good at helping them breathe when it gets painful. Uh, because I've been on that journey a lot, I have an idea of what kinds of dynamics might be emerging. Uh, like any good midwife, I spend a lot of time reading the literature and thinking about what's new and what's emerging. Uh, but the, the student is doing most of the learning. All I'm doing is shaping and breathing with them and 
reminding them when it gets hard that there's something good on the other side of it. I hope, at least. I mean, I'm very conscious of the ways in which a lot of education in this country, a lot of schooling, is particularly destructive. I mean, I, I've been teaching online for a very long time, and one of the arguments theologians used to make to me was that you, you cannot teach theology online because theology is an embodied discourse, and teaching online is a disembodying practice, so therefore one can't. And I would counter immediately. I have been in a lot of classrooms that are deeply disembodying, face-to-face -face classrooms, and I have been in some very relational, embodied environments online. So, you know, teaching, teaching carries power with it, and that power can be Cannot, I mean, in the Christian context, we talk about canonic power, power poured out, right? You can teach in a way that does that, or you can teach in a way that's power over. Power over can be deeply destructive. And, you know, I, I try not to do that. I hope I don't do much of that. I realize I carry all sorts of structural privilege in all sorts of ways, so it's inevitable that I will find myself uh, inadvertently reinscribing stuff, but I try very hard not to. I'm always a learner. Um, I think you can't be a teacher unless you're a learner. Now, there are all sorts of ways in which uh, people will tell me they've learned things when I wasn't trying to teach them anything. And there are other times when I think I'm trying very explicitly and well to teach something that things don't get learned. So again, that's kind of a mysterious moment. Um, yeah, I, I'm always a learner.